Hello world! Wave time here, bringing to you another super project. Now this super project is going to be both showcasing what I have made and also demonstrating how you can build your own mobile quarry Mark IV. Now this one basically improves upon my mobile quarry Mach 2.1 design quite a lot. I'll get into it a bit more in a bit. Now over here I made a Mach Mark 3 design earlier and pretty much what I did was I compacted everything so that all the wires could fit on one level, you could fit as many solar panels as you could and I also added a light switch basically this light switch if you're not in an internal day age like I am detects the sun and the sunlight kind of the same thing and basically it makes the delay a lot greater when it is off anyways let's go to the mobile quarry mark 4 now there are several improvements the mark 4 has over the 2 and the 3 and all the other ones especially the mark 1 you do not want to see that one basically it has the same 5x5 footprint and the same little bore head as before but what it features is if you count the layers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 there are only 8 layers so this is a 5 by 5 by 8 mobile quarry which is pretty good and it also features the kill switch and the light sensor which is tucked in right in here so let's show some of the things that this thing can do let's go with some of the basic movements so currently I am 350 100 and negative 290 so how about we bring it to 360 and 100 and 300 no negative 300 so let's pull this up and say 360 negative 300 go to this will basically decode it and it'll start moving automatically all of the engines so that it the center point specifically arrives at the particular spot that you are asking for now it's almost at the negative 300 point which is right here so if we watch it for a bit we'll be able to see that it indeed gets to that location now when it gets to that location which is right in front of us it'll start huh, maybe it's poor programmed at a different area you'll see that eventually it'll start moving the other way and I got cut recording now there are several improvements that the mark 4 has over all of the other previous quarry designs one of the main one is the fact that it has one two three four five six seven eight layers instead of the previous uh, well in the case of the mark uh, 3 over there 10 mark 2 11 and mark 1 20 30 I lost count anyways so let's focus on some of the basic movements that this can do so what you will want to do is when we clear the page you don't want to see the nonsense and we want to detect go to a certain spot to start quarrying so we look around and see that we want to go to how about 360 and a certain height and negative 3 let's see negative 300 so let's see we type in 360 negative 300 as the X and the Y coordinates and type in go to it'll start decoding it and then first it'll go all in the Z direction so travel along the axis until it reaches negative 300 which is approximately here though it's hard to tell with the line of sight that I currently am taking now when it gets to here the center of the quarry it'll say hey I have finally got as far as I need to and then it'll start traveling in the other direction and if we are lucky with the calibration it should be able to arrive pretty much right under us 
with the middle under us. So if we wait, as you see, it stops, wait for any more movements, it decides it's done, and then kudos. Now, what do you want to do? You want to actually lower it to the part that you want to start quarrying. So what we'll do is try to lower it to 91. However, I don't know how you do that. So what we have to do is type 91 as our Y and go to raise to. So it'll determine if it's above or below that position and then lower accordingly. Now it's at the bottom and as you see with the engine it's not moving anymore. So you got to the place you want to go. Now you want to start quarrying. But let's actually move a bit out because currently we are a little too close to that area. So I'll bring up my heads up display, go to instead 360 and negative 310 and move it into position. Just go 360, negative 310, go to, and the logic will see that it already reached its destination on the X coordinates and will only go in the Z coordinate system. So, now you're at the place you want to start quarrying. Now, you gotta figure out what's the dimensions you want. I'm thinking like 10 by 10, that's a simple dimensions. And perhaps let's go 10 down. So 10 by 10 by 10. So we go in and type 10, 10, and 10. So the first two 10s, well the first 10 indicates the dimensions this way. The second 10, indicates the dimensions this way and the third 10 you guessed it indicates the dimensions this way so let's get those in so we got the 10 10 10 and type dimensions now is it all caps or is it like that up ah, we got the dimensions so the dimensions are now hard coded into the system so it will follow those dimensions pretty stringently so what we do is then type start and then it'll start mining starting with the grass of course because hey this is the ultimate lawnmower you can think of it that way now all the items will go through tubes that are in here and connect to the condenser that is in there allowing for all of the nice materials to go in and be condensed now what if there's some drastic sort of problem that you need to stop the quarry at? Well, there's this kill switch. So whenever you flip it, it stops. And when you try to resume with the kill switch flipped, it doesn't do anything. But if you flip it again to turn it off and type resume, it'll realize where it is at the quarry, then continue and finish the layer that it's doing so it's 10 by 10 so it, then it starts going down then actually starts eating the ground then it'll continue going in the other direction because of its intelligence continue 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 and dig a nice sizable hole so now that you can see what the quarry can do I just placed a nice little frame in the air so that it's a nice working station from where we can work funny how that works so what we'll want to do is make a nice 5 by 5 platform of frames so if we just build them all we'll have a nice area in which we'll be able to make modifications to the platform to allow it to basically fly through the air destroying all that you hold dear you know all the fun stuff so now that we have this down what you want to do is break these key frames. So place, breaking those key frames and if we take our solar panels, our panels and our battery boxes, we'll put our battery boxes in those locations. So now we'll then need to take our frames and place them right here. And the reason for this is because when we start placing our solar panels, we'll have one here, and we'll have this here. 
Now, otherwise, if these frames were not here, this one would still be attached because it's on a panel, but this one would not be because it is on a battery box, not a solid block, and not connected. We cannot place any of these solar panels on frames themselves. I'm right clicking right now. And if we put them on covered ones and not paneled, they would fall off when this structure starts to move, which we don't want that to happen. So when we panel this all off and then add the solar panels, we'll have a nice platform in which we'll have uh, basically an infinite amount of free energy. Uh, if only Al Gore saw us doing this right now. An infinite amount of free energy with which we'll be able to drive our mobile quarry. So just do that right now. Now that we have the panels all on and attached, we can start looking at the underneath of this structure. We have to place all of our engines so that they are attached to frames. And let's just see. So first, we'll have the four main primary engines right here. And offshooting from them, you can laugh at the design all you want. You put all of these motors on top of the battery boxes. This one doesn't have a battery box because it's special. And it'll start getting energy to the system of motors. Now what you want to do next is pretty important. You'll then want to add frames to the sides so that it basically fills in the corners so that these motors, if they are not already, connect to frames. For instance, in this case, this motor would not be connected to a frame at all because, well, it's connected to a battery box. Kind of hard for it to do so. Now, orienting the primary engines, we want to have it so that when this runs by a redstone current, it will push this engine over this direction. So this one will pull it this direction. And this one has to face it and be oriented in the same direction. Now what this does is when a redstone current activates this, it will basically turn on, bring this over to this direction, and then this in turn, when it receives a redstone current, will pull the entire structure over. Now what you'll want to do is move the primary engines so that they're all basically doing the exact same thing. Not basically, are doing the exact same thing. There's nothing worse in a design than failing at the beginning because there's just a small error. So just orient them so that they're facing each other and are pulling in the same direction. Like so. Now, the other directions are important as well because currently this um, you can think of it as a swastika if you want but I like to think of it as a flower of awesomeness an omni flower yes let's think of it that way they go in all of the four cardinal directions north south east and west now these next few are the ones that pull it in other directions the up and down so Let's place the down motors right here. These ones will also be connected to a frame that gets pulled out like so. And they are receiving energy directly via this battery box. So if we orient this one, it needs to face the same direction. And when this one gets a redstone pulse, it will pull this down, in which case this one will receive the redstone pulse. Simple enough. Now for the up direction, we have to do something a little more crafty. <laughs> Get it? Crafty? Uh, anyways, what we'll need to do is bring this little appendage down, and this one, all of these in fact, will need to go down a bit. And these, even more so, we'll get into that in a second. This gets pulled down, this one gets pulled out, and these two final frames are added. This one orients this way, this orients that way, they both go up. 
Now, as you see, they do not receive any power currently. That is because we need to get a wire connected to them. But if they were powered, which they will be, this will move up, move this engine up when this is powered. This engine powers, this one gets pushed up, then it actually, we gotta get the direction correct, we are actually facing it in the wrong direction. It needs to go this way, so when this pushes, it'll move here, it'll catch this frame, move the entire structure up. So now that we have that, let's do some wiring to get everything connected. How we connect the up motor to the energy network is pretty simple. All we do is take our nice blue jacketed wires right here, doesn't matter what color, we bring it over and place three of them. So it connects to this engine or motor, whatever you like to call it, and brings energy to here so eventually both of them gets powered. Simple, really. Then this one, it's already powered so we won't focus on that. Now we gotta focus on the wiring however. So we bring these all down, just as we did before. Now we're going to have this one get pulled out two, two frames. That's all it takes. This, the other side of it, gets pulled down a further two so that it attaches like that. This one then gets pulled across. And this one actually gets removed. Do we remove it? I'm pretty dang sure. So let's remove it, and if we need to, we'll modify it to change it. Now, here, we'll place one panel. And then, we'll place panels on all of the faces inside the motor. So here, here, still here, more over here, and as well we get it here so that we'll be able to continue. Now another important thing that we forgot is to figure out how we get a redstone current to these engines, the secondary engines, when the first one fires. How we do that is simple. We put panels in this location so when this moves there's a panel right here where redstone torches. And we do that for this one as well. If you look there it is. Third one, we go here. And fourth one, we go here. Now you're probably asking why there aren't six, but it's pretty simple. We don't need six. Two of them are actually shared. This one is shared by both this engine and this engine, so this direction and the down. And this one shared is shared by this direction and the up, which works out very well. So, now let's get some wiring down. So, we got to get the first few directions down, which is pretty simple. Let's remove most of our junk because we don't need it. Let's put the white wire right here, I believe. Is that the right direction? No, one moment. Ah, yes, the white wire goes right here. And the orange one goes across it and basically this one goes for this direction which is the positive x direction and the one for negative x is this one which gets an orange wire magenta is going to be the negative z direction negative z which goes here and we got the light blue one to go right here which is the positive z direction let's get some more wires and then go for the next part which is we'll go with the nice little plus direction. We'll need to have a yellow right here and then we get a red alloy wire bare there so we can add a jacketed wire connected so that it actually is connected. And finally we get this one which is a bit more difficult. What we do is we put some panels on it so panels here and here and here and we add this here and we add a red alloy wire now also what we'll need is a stone cover you can use a cover strip to go right here so that it's not connected to this engine 
which would kind of be a bad thing. So now that we get a few more panels on this, let's just put that there for show. It doesn't necessarily need to be there. Let's get a few of the bundled cables which will be required. All I can think is someone really wanted to bundle. Okay, so this is going to be a bit complex in its nature. So let's try to get it as smooth as possible. We need to connect everything to these bundle cables. So let's place these around. So all of those are connected and we'll need to have those there too. Now this magenta one is of not too complex so we just place this one here take three jacketed wires and then bring it across. So everything is connected and functional. Now the only way to check functionality is to do some manual tests. So what you have to do is for instance the down one will have to break the line place down a redstone torch and we see that it moves. Now you have to check is any part fallen off and we see that nothing has fallen off. The key for this testing is that if one engine works pretty much all of them are working and connected. More like two of them. If two are working then everything is working. So what we'll do is uh, orient ourselves a little trickily, take this one out, the yellow, and test the up. So place the torch, and it goes up, and it's working. So let's place it a few more times, so that it moves all the way up, moving on up, and then, well, nothing more to say. We have the Omni engine complete for this design. So basically all of the movements are controlled by this module. What you can do is if you really want to, you can actually make it a lot more compact by removing the solar panels if you're using this as a simple engine on some other device. Say you need a ship and you need it to move and you're not worrying about solar energy at that point, you can just remove the solar panels and this and it'll be perfectly okay. Anyways, so all we need to do is cover it up to make it look pretty and then we'll continue on and do the actual quarry part. So for the rest of this video I'm going to refer to this as an engine. You can pretty much refer to it as its full name by an Omni engine but I'm just gonna for simplicity just call it an engine. So what we'll want to do is build a bit under the engine so that we'll have a nice little work area for which us we can work with. In fact, let's work mainly on the ground, maybe a few things up. So we have to look at all four corners of the engine. So we go up, look up, place a block, move to the side again, and this basically indicates the area in which we'll be working on our device. So the first thing that you want to do is layer down the block breakers and it's simply just five of them. Now obviously I did a goof and it goes like that and this one irrelevant. Now we'll have to do block breakers on this to match it and there is a three wide gap between them. Now just orienting them so that they're facing down is all you need to do, which happens to be really difficult because one of the directions is as far as possible from the direction we want. Okay, there we go. Now the next part, we need redstone tubes on top of them. This helps fire them, if you will, firing them so that they can break what is underneath them. So placing, and there we go. Now usually what people do is they put frames on both the block breakers right here and they place frames on the redstone tubes right there. This is not what we're going to do. What we shall do is place the frames instead on top of the redstone tubes and this is pretty much as high as we're going to get it. So that. Now to connect it it's pretty much a simple endeavor of just 
connecting that and we'll worry about the connection of this later but what we'll do is place those down and place another frame here this is where your chest can be now the chest I'm going to choose is the condenser the alchemical condenser but what you can do is choose like an ender chest or any other sort of thing I like to call target cobble diamonds turn to cobble I like it anyways you do that and everything's pretty much connected this part will need to be connected in the future but let's move on now in my hand are pretty much the three major computer components we have the monitor central processing unit and the disk drive so what we'll want to face put down first are two more frames make it nice and cozy and place the CPU right down here the monitor right here and the disk drive right here so we'll want to load a disk in it eventually but this is the pressing matter we have a hole here and what people usually do is they place a frame right here this is not what you do what we want to do is add the back plane and the 8k RAM module to do that we need a solid block and then we put the back plane and then the RAM this ensures that it is connected now to make sure that it stays with the rest of it what we'll need to do is place two frames one to connect the RAM to the bottom half and two to connect the bottom half to the rest of the structure now is a good time to add those three frames here to connect the tubes and this part of the frames together and then that is good so now we'll need to place a few more things mainly the IO expander which will go right next to the central processing unit place one of these and this now you take these and place some panels on these frames these are important then you take the bundled cables place them down now the thing is that these bundled cables have to connect to this little bundled cable jacketed bundle cable rather and to do that we need some more jacketed bundle cables now that you have some of them crafted you just place them here and then when this structure goes down this will connect to that allowing control of the system now to add our kill switch what we do is add a nice little bit here and add another bundled cable and let's place our toggle right here and orient it how you want you can either have it like this or you can have it like this it honestly doesn't matter user preference and then for that wire we'll use gray and connect it checking the wires it is right after pink so pink gray simple and for the pink this will basically be breaking all of this uh, causing the break word to take effect which means activating all of the block breakers to do this we need to basically visualize that this is connecting coming down and connecting with the rest of the structure so what we'll need to do is add the pink wire right here and then this pink wire will connect to using a cover as one ingredient and then stone jacketed and some red alloy as others we place the red alloy here and the stone jacketed it connects so when the engine comes down this will be connected now finally we have the light switch which will be required so if we get our light sensor light sensor which is here we only need one of them stop jumping the gun we have the light sensor we will place a cover so that we can place a wire on there but we orient this here turn it around and put it at its lowest setting when there's only two pixels anymore and it'll open all the way right so and for this color we'll just choose blue plunk 
and also it'd be nice to have it actually connect to the structure when it comes all the way down. So these are basically all of the components and everything should be attached. So when we actually bring this down and then bring it back up again, it should all work. So let's get our redstone torches, get a few of those lime wires, if we spell it correctly. So we can replace it afterwards, place this, put it down, one, two, making sure everything is connected. Oh, one thing to add before it actually connects. What you want to do is add panels to the top of this structure. So if there is any problem, you can just lift it again. Now placing panels, sorry, covers, they are covers to everything except this one. As you see, I did the same with the bottom of the other one. So when it lowers down, the only connection is this frame to this frame, but that's all you need. It'll all be one system when we do this. So it's now connected. Place this again. And if we try moving with our yellow, it'll move up. Nothing has fallen. And as you can see, the blue wire is attached as well as the pink wire. If you can see through the frames, congratulations. You are awesome and have surpassed me in all, uh, not all the, yeah, you know what I mean. Shut up. Okay, so that is the physical structure of this build. All that we'd like to do is make it nice and pretty. Maybe check if the break one is working, but we can do that later. Let's cover it all up so that we can make it look nice and pretty. And by the way, stone covers aren't required. You can use diamond if you are like that. Personally, I'd like dark matter covers, but that's just me. Now that we actually built the physical part of this monstrosity, both the Omni engine and the mining module that's attached to it, we'll want to actually code it. Now the problem is, the coding part, there is a lot of substance to it. So to be able to explain it well, we're going to have to have that as a separate episode, since I don't think you really want to watch 45 minutes of coding after 30 minutes of building this. So next episode, next part, which should be beside you right now if you happen to be in the future, you will be able to see the coding of this, the explanation of said coding, and possible improvements to this code that you can do yourself. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Super Project Mobile Quarry Mark IV. If you like what you see, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to watch that other part to this episode. Wave time here. Signing off. Have a wonderful day.